continues to stand together. We will march together. We will together. We will scream and cry together. Because justice is facing something like this in the future, so we had to bring her here, let them know if something that is not treating guys fairly, you had to stand out yourself. And then you had to stand out as a group, not just an individual, you know. I mean, we nice, we, we, we are nice, hardworking people here in America. So um, me, I'm a hardworking guy, and by them, I want them to know too, you know. Here, here's, you no, know, we are in a great America, you know. We're not here trying to, we're not here like here to get like unfair treatment or something. We work hard. I just think it's really important to support our Asians and because we are Chinese, so we think it's really important to come to the rally. And also because some people say Asians are quiet and quiet being quiet won't solve any problems. Well, hello and welcome, everybody. I am Venominous. And that was uh, uh anti-Asian hate rally that took place March 20th of 2021. The same day that all the anti-lockdown protests took place as well. Though you can imagine which one will get blamed for the... Uh, the, the inevitable surge that will follow uh, whenever they decide the next uh, the numbers need to go up I'd play some of these but it's really not what I want to talk about right now but they are massive these anti-lockdown ones truly impressive the only difference between the two is uh, generally they're all masked up, but they're still extra close. I believe you have to do both, both the fairy tale steps for the fairy tale, you know what. But I but I digress. I wanted to uh, start with that. Oh shoot, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry about that. Sensitive uh, tablet here. Oh, it's throwing me everywhere. Oh, shoot. Where is the link? Got too many links here. Is this it? Nope. Uh, this one? Nope. Is it this one? No. Nope. Uh, here we go. In photos, protesters rally against anti-Asian hate in Atlanta and across U.S. after spa killings. No, I'm not trying to refresh it. Uh, okay. Am I still recording? Yes, I am. Protesters have been holding massive demonstrations and vigils across the U.S. over the weekend in response to the fatal spa shootings in the Atlanta metropolitan area in Georgia. Big picture, those in attendance rallied to denounce a surge in violence and hate incidents against Asian Americans in honor 
uh, and honor the eight people who lost their lives in last week's Atlanta attacks, including six women of Asian descent. This is Lee Ta, or Lin, Lin Ta. I am at a vigil downtown, Des Moines. Des Moines. De, I haven't said that word, name in a long time, so forgive me if I will mispronounce it. To remember the victims of Atlanta shooting, we will not flee, said New Hyun, oh goodness, president of Iowa Asian Alliance. Demonstrators rally in Atlanta, Georgia, and to show support for Asian and Pacific Islanders, the AAPI communities. March 20th, a 21-year-old ma white man was charged with murder last week, but local law enforcement says it's too early to call. The shooting's a hate crime. And, yeah. A vigil in Columbus, Ohio, on March 20th for the victims of the spa shootings over... 183 organizations have joined AAPI groups in calling for $300 million to address anti-Asian violence. Wonderful. The cash flow. Protesters at the Stop AAPI hate rally outside the Georgia State Capitol building March 20th. Asian Americans also face discrimination in sports, with stereotypes depicting Asians as nerds, <laughs> emasculating Asian men, and fetishizing Asian women as submissive. Axios Shana Chen and Russell Contreras report. Uh, Stop Asian Hate Candlelight Vigil in the City Park of Alabama, Los Angeles County, California, March 20th. Oh, look at that photo. Call it what it is. White terrorism. Mm-hmm. Just, just jump to conclusions because that's not being a bigot. Atlanta 20... Atlanta 20... Uh, sorry. Atlanta March 20, March in solidarity with the Asian community. Not a virus. There's a lot of that going. Hate is a virus. I'm not a virus, and hate is a virus are two uh, running themes in this narrative. Demonstrators at the Atlanta rally on March 20th. And then we have Georgia Senator John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock addressing protesters in Atlanta on March 20th. Stop making excuses for white violence. Stop making assumptions of white violence. And here's an interesting mural. And what do we have in there? Can I get zoom in? No, I can't zoom in. Wonderful. Uh, oh, I can draw it though. Hold on. Let me just circle it. What do we have there? The monarch butterfly for your mind control. Uh, not your model minority. W Waki Dong gets emotional while listening to speakers after the march in Atlanta on the March 20th. Protect Asian Lives. Demonstrators attending a vigil in Union Square in New York City to mourn on March 19th for Atlanta shooter victims. Actress Sandra. Sandra O oh speaks during the Stop Asian Hate rally in Pittsburgh. To our communities, reach out everyone here. I will, I will offer, I will challenge everyone here. If you see something, will you help me? Yeah. If you see one of our sisters and brothers in, hell, in, in need, will you help us? Yeah. And so we must understand as Asian Americans, we just need to reach out our hand to our sisters and brothers and say, Asian pride. There's only one pride you're not allowed to be proud of. 
only one group of people that are not allowed to be proud of anything that they are that is part of their culture but um yeah I'm not even allowed to say that Senator War Warnock and I address today's rally in Atlanta to mourn the victims of this week's massacre and to express our love and support for Asians, uh, Asian American community in Georgia and nationwide. Gratitude to the organizers and scenes from the Stop AAPI Hate rally in downtown Atlanta this afternoon, where several hundred are gathered, non -so not social distancing whatsoever. Um, Oh, and some even have their masks off. Very few, though. I guess, you know, because you got to do your speech up there. It's okay, then. I know you're not allowed to sing in public. But you can, uh, you can virtue signal all you want in a speech. Bloomberg Quick Take. We're tokens, we're trophies, until we're targets and scapegoats. Demonstrators gathered for a stop AAPI hate rally in Atlanta, Georgia on Saturday after a shooting at two spas killed eight people earlier this week. That's the end of that article. Uh. Um. So now I want to go ahead and go through some of the the statistics of these hate crimes, alleged surge in hate hate crimes that have uh, been. The media has been pushing out there for the last several days. Um, so we have this article here. Reports of anti-Asian hate crimes are surging in Canada during the COVID-19 pandemic. Toronto's research shows that there has been significant increase in hate crimes against Asian Canadians since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, with major cities seeing crime rates that are six and 700% higher than the previous year. According to live data from Fight COVID Racism, there have been 891 reported incidents of anti-Asian hate crimes across Canada as of midday March 17th. Since the start of the pandemic, hate crimes against Asian... Um, where am I? Oh, Asian Canadians have been on the rise. In a report released by Statistics Canada in July 2020, the agency wrote that proportion of visible minorities who experience an increase in harassment or attacks based on their race, ethnicity, or skin color have tripled compared to the rest of the population since the start of the pandemic. However, the largest increase was seen amongst Chinese, Korean, and Southeast Asian individuals. Um... This is the one. So, <laughs> this increase is, uh, according to the stats can, if you want to go over to the report here, it says down here. Visible minorities perceived more frequent race-based harassment or attacks and felt that these incidents had increased since the start of the COVID. Approximately 1 in 5, 21% visible minority participants perceived that harassment or attacks based on race, ethnicity, or skin color occurred sometimes or often in their neighborhood, doubling double the proportion among the rest of the population. Some visible minority groups in Canada perceived that discriminatory 
discriminatory incidents in their neighborhood occurred at higher frequencies, in particular black 26%, Korean 26%, Chinese 25%, Filipino 22%. Participants perceived that these race-based incidents happened sometimes or often. Um, where is it? It's over here somewhere. It's just over here. Um, Oh, shoot. Up here? I lost it again. I found it. Okay. Discriminatory harassment of attacks which were perceived to occur more frequently by participants designated as my visible minorities represent a way in which perceptions of safety among visible minority groups may be more negatively negatively impacted compared with the rest of the population, even though participants were not directly asked about their personal experiences of victimization, their awareness or perceptions of discriminatory, discriminatory harassment or attacks occurring in their neighborhood may contribute to their overall sense of personal and community safety. Perception and reality are very different things. This is not based on any actual incidents <laughs> it's just the perception <laughs> so i mean boom this is out of the this is nothing this is a nothing burger goodbye uh next let's see oh here uh i was mentioning how some of the um incidents of hate crimes increased some 700%. So here in Vancouver specifically, I want to show you something. So Vancouver, and uh, this is very important to note. If it'll, oh, sorry. I gotta actually make it load. Okay, so we're, here's the disclaimer that's important to, uh, to point out here. So, beginning in 2018, Statistics Canada has changed crime counting standards to include unfounded incidents. Beginning in 2019, all KPI reports reflected this change, and previous year's results were retroactively calculated to include unfounded incidents. Also, crime statistics re record the date the incident was reported to the police, reported date, and the date the incident occurred occurred date. KPI reports prior to 2019 used the occurred date as this date was more reflective of active crime trends emerging in Vancouver. St statistics Canada uses the reported date to report crime statistics and KPI reports and from 2019 onwards use that standard to maintain consistency. Re results have been retroactively calculated to reflect the reported date. So I mean yeah, so there's going to be a giant jump in cases, and it's even including unfounded incidents. So, boom, that one's gone. That's a nothing burger. If I can just get out of there now. Uh, what else do I got for you? Mm -hmm. Is there more on this? Is there a button? Yeah. I mentioned the cool, the interesting little connection between uh, the aromatherapy spa in the shooting on the building. The number of the, the building suite is 1907, which happens to be the exact same as Project 9, like number, the same number as Project 1907, which is uh, more anti-Asian hate crime incident reports reporting um, project which I haven't really had time to go through that one 
Uh, I have it right here. So racism incident, incident reporting, a community-based reporting tool to track incidents of racism. Project 1907 has partnered with Vancouver Asian Film Festival of the Eliminate Hate campaign, bringing our respective initiatives together to form one centralized racism reporting cent cent center. The aim of this partnership is to build a more coordinated effort in understanding the impacts of rising anti-Asian racism. Eliminate Hate Reporting Center collects data on incidents of racism, hate, and violence experienced by the Asian diaspora in Canada. In the aggregate, data will be used to develop strategies, design interventions, raise awareness, advocate for policies, and improve outcomes for our communities. Click to report. Mm, updates. National Collaboration of Data Collection on Anti-Asian Racism, September 2020. On the anniversary of 1907 anti-Asian riots, we join Chinese Canadian National Council Toronto Chapter, Chinese Canadian National Council for Social Justice, and Vancouver Asian Film Festival to release the results of our national collaboration of data, data collection on anti-Asian ra racism. Access of all infographics, templates, and social media toolkit here. And they have a bunch of Oh yeah, that, that's an interesting one. Hold on a sec. Look at that. The fight COVID racism. That's a really interesting website funded by the Canadian government. And we'll get into that one soon. 600 plus incidents of anti-Asian racism reported to eliminatehate.org or covidracism.ca since the onset of COVID-19. These are unfounded incidents, I, t I take it. So yeah, I haven't looked through this one, so. Let's just get a general view of it. Uh, about us, we are a grassroots group made up of Asian women. We aim to elevate Asian voices that are underrepresented and undervalued in mainstream political, social, and cultural di discourse, including amplifying the voices of women. Our work is led entirely by volunteer community organizers. Ah, Project 1907 is situated on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the uh, Musqueam, Squamish, oh my goodness, my apologies, I can't pronounce those names, uh, nations. We have acknowledged the importance of understanding the histories that brought us to this land, and we seek to understand our place within that history. We are grateful for uh, the tremendous labor and leadership of indige ind indigenous peoples in the racial justice movement. We strive to use our experiences to build collective action and solidarity. Resources. Cross-racial solidarity movement building. Dear mom, dad, uncle, aunt, auntie, Black Lives Matter to us too. Letters from Black Lives. Black and Asian American feminist solidarities. A reading list. Oof. We will not be used. Are Asian Americans the radical? I can't pronounce that. Questions on the limits and effects of Asian American allyship. Arabs for Black Power, a reading list for non-Black Arab allies. Anti-Blackness in the Arab world. 
It starts at home, confronting anti-blackness in South Asian communities. Model minority myth again used as a racial wedge between Asians and blacks. Mountains that take wing. API resource on Black Lives Matter. API, Black Solidarity and Anti-Racism Resource List. Alternatives to calling the police. Anti-racist education for Asian dias diaspora in Canada during COVID-19. I'm going to click that one. Fantastic. Alternatives to calling the police. Anti-racist education for Asian diaspora in Canada during COVID-19. Notes. This document was first created in May 2020 and is an ongoing work in progress. We hope uh, this can... Sorry, this can be a living and collaborative document. Please add links, resources, pro paragraphs, or suggest edits, blah, blah, blah. We recognize that there are many existing resources and docs before this one on alternative to calling the, pol the police. Our goal is for this document was to compile some of these resources and place them in the context of anti-Asian racism in Canada during the COVID-19 pandemic and what we hope can be a broader dialogue around interracial solidarity. This document was compiled by a group of Asian writers and organizers in Canada. Our learning uh, is made possible by the work of Black and Indigenous organizers, writers in prison, abolitionists, abol abol ah, abolitionists. If you have suggestions for resources or language to add to the document, please email AsianCanadianAbolition at gmail.com. Um, what's wrong with calling the police? What's wrong with calling the police? Police are inherently racist and colonial inst and colonial institution. The RCMP was historically created by the Canadian state as a means to control indigenous peoples, to restrict their movements, to suppress indigenous traditions, and to apprehend indigenous children and place them in the violent resi residential school system. Today, the RCMP and other Canadian police forces continue to inflict violence on indigenous people from violent police assaults and abuse of indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people to the recent RCMP raids on uh, what? Suwetan land defender camps just last month the Winnipeg police shot and killed Ishaya Hudson a 16 year old indigenous girl Canada also has a long history of anti-black racism in which the police have played a central role today black people are 20 times more likely to be shot and killed by the police than white people in Toronto uh, across major cities like Montreal Ottawa, Halifax, Toronto, and Edmonton. Black indigenous individuals and ra are racially profiled and subject to over-policing and police assaults. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many cities in Canada have seen increased police powers and hefty fines as a means of enforcing physical distancing. Grassroots groups have expressed concerns around how these heightened police powers will disproportionately target black, indigenous, radicalized, and homeless individuals who are already suspect to over-policing. Or subject to over policing. Uh, calling the police can increase the risk of violence. The police exist to make white people feel safe and to some extent those assimilating into whiteness. While abusing, killing, and incarcerating black, indigenous, migrant, and radicalized individuals and those living with disability or mental illness, when light skinned Asians encourage our Asians to call the police, they are prioritizing their own perception of safety in a way that legitimizes police violence and risks putting the lives of those experiencing over-policing in danger. And we should recommend that the Asian Canadian community has also been impacted by police violence. In 1997, Edmund Yu was shot and killed by the police, Toronto police on a TTC bus. Moreover, those... Moreover, there is no guarantee that police will find that a racist act occurred. Often, the victim will 
bear the burden and adequately of adequately proving that a racist act occurred. When ra racist incidents happen without white witnesses, the police will engage in a credibility contest of weighing each person's account. Victims who don't present as ideal or believable, i.e. middle or upper class, able-bodied whites, white speaks English or French without an accent, are a further risk of trauma and or criminalization by the police. We cannot rely on the state to keep our communities safe from anti-Asian racism. We have already seen how the state has failed to protect some of the most vulnerable communities during the pandemic. In response, community members have shown up for one another uh, through mutual aid funds or efforts. Oh, is that mutual aid again? Uh, helping each other with groceries, cooking errands, and more. Asian communities can learn from mutual aid practices as a response to the rise of anti-Asian hate by supporting one another instead of turning to the police and the state. All right. I want to leave this now. Get me out of here. Let's look at the COVID racism. It's, um, it's pretty similar to that. I believe, yes, they are the same thing. And it's funded by Canada. All right. So this is funded by Canada. Um, where was it? Center of Resources? Yeah, yes. There's an anti-racism racism campaign, health and health, blah, 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 income support, legal support, petition, sex worker, income support, police alternatives. Son of a gun. Again. And it's the same document. So your Canadian government's funding this anti-police, this defund the police content here, which, you know, I'm not you know, saying police are the greatest thing. They, um, I don't think <laughs> the alternative to the police should be what they're, what they would propose. I don't think it's going <laughs> to, all I see what's going to happen is we're going to have some serious you know, unruliness and corporations will come in to save the day with their RoboCop drone freaking tech, their hyper super, uh, hyper surveillance tech and whatnot. It's just gonna, it's gonna be like that TV show. Um, oh, now I'm losing, completely forget the name of it. What the heck is it called? Uh, oh, Omniscient. It's a TV show uh, straight from Brazil. It's a Brazilian TV show. It's actually pretty good. And it's about uh, this city. There's this girl. She works for this company that uh, is called Omniscient. And it's about, it's, it's like an alternative to your typical police service. It would uh, just have drones that are assigned to individuals and they follow them and watch them like 24 seven. And anyways, uh, it's, it's like a voluntary system because there is cities like there's, there's like a, it's like an isolated spot of the city or it's, or it might be its own city. I can't remember, but anyways, there is like a kind of like a, almost like an airport kind of security trend. Like you walk through this security thing to leave the city limit and then your drone like it goes to a base and then you're kind of off the grid kind of thing it's pretty interesting stuff but yeah um that's not here or there oh uh <laughs> i'm gonna wrap this up real quick with uh one more 
thing to nail this whole statistic thing to the wall here. And then I'm going to end this and then start up again and make another part of the video because I want to make these shorter. Uh, is it this one? The racism virus. This is great. This this uh, this knocks it right out of the park. Not reporting them to police. Remember that. We started last year collecting data um, firsthand, primary source accounts, because we knew the racism was widespread, that it was becoming institutionalized in policies, and that we wanted to hold government accountable. Um, it's been a horrific year as we read time and time again how people have cast us out as foreigners, have um, caught us. And not just hate crimes, yelling and whether or not um, the attacks attacked for oh, there's been I went this too far ahead. Used carefully. Talk about what a hate crime is, that legal definition, and also why did you feel it was important to write about that distinction? Um, yeah, thank you for having me, Vicky. Um, from Jump, I do want to say, as you've been uh, mentioning and as Dr. Jung mentioned, a lot of the incidents we've been seeing throughout the pandemic has been a reflection of the heightened anti-Asian sentiment um, that Asian Americans have been attacked for. There's been this perpetuation of this racist link between Asian Americans and the virus. Um, the piece specifically dealt with the attacks we've been seeing this year on our elders um, in Chinatowns. Uh, and, you know, it is important to make a distinction whether or not, um, you know, what these crimes are and exactly what they're being investigated for. Most of these attacks have not been found to be racially motivated or thus far there's no evidence that there has been. Um, I think that there's a little bit of uh, a confusion attacks have not been found to be racially motivated or thus far there's no evidence that there has been. Um, I think that there's a little bit of uh, a confusion. The attacks have not been found to be racially motivated or thus far there's no evidence that there has been. Um, I think that there's a little bit of uh, a confusion in that if something doesn't get a hate crime distinction, that doesn't necessarily mean that race doesn't play into it. Um, you know, as people of color here, I think all of us can say that there's barely any interactions in which we could say that race doesn't touch an issue. I think there's very, very few circumstances in which, you know, race doesn't factor into it. And experts say that, you know, there could be racial profiling involved. There may not be a motivation of, of racial animus, but people could certainly be profiled because they're seen as easier targets or they're seen as more lucrative targets. Um, you know, context is incredibly important here, too. And people. I agree 100%. Context is important. Maybe it's not about race. Maybe that's because, like she said, easy targets. Are pointing out that right now we are in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of these attacks are occurring. Targets of opportunity. Opportunity could also factor into it. I think that, you know, 
experts really stress that it's important we don't, you know, self-diagnose or misdiagnose what the issue is. Um, in a lot of these cases, attackers are people of color. Um, they're from black and brown communities. We know that the justice system isn't colorblind. Um, we also know that, you know, mis attackers are people of color um they're from black and brown communities we know that the justice system isn't color do is um in a lot of these cases attackers are people of color um they're from black and brown communities we know that the justice system isn't colorblind um we also know that you know misdiagnosing something like this could inflame tensions between communities or you know kind of create this idea that one community is targeting another when that may not be the case um, but it's okay if they're white we can say that it's white racism white terrorism because it's okay to label the whites, white people, as um, a hate group that are targeting another group of people. But if it's in the majority of the cases, they're actually brown and black people that are hit, attacking Asian Americans or whatnot, then, oh, well, we don't want to, you know, stigmatize the two groups against one another and whatnot. It's such total hypocrisy bullshit. Over 90% of the incidents they receive don't reach, the, do not rise up to the level, of, to the level of crimes. <laughs> Boom. Nothing burger. It's just, it's ridiculous, folks. Uh, this is 100% division being pushed against a particular group of people that is the white people and it's just to weaken the west trying to divide us all when we really should just be together and not not focusing on each other uh, in any kind of hateful way we should you know be working together but that's not what they want. They want to uh, 
split us and divide us and make us hate each other. And but they gotta focus all the hate to one particular group that is the majority of the population in these Western countries because they are the majority. And and uh, by having that minority status, you do automatically identify in a way with other minorities and then they can use that kind of camaraderie to work against a nation as a whole anyways i will wrap this up because it is longer than i wanted it to be and i will catch you guys later reporting from the brave new world i am Benominus.